So there we go. We are live right now. Yusuf Chowdhury here from San Antonio, Texas at the Texas A&M University in San Antonio. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yes. And we're just going live right now. This is a live workshop, folks. Of course, you cannot see my face, but it's all good. You'll see me at the end of the day. <laughs> all right, cool. So, so let's start. Uh, well, first of all, how many of you have a website? You have a website? <laughs> okay. It's Betty. You, sir? You do? All of you. Awesome. Okay, excellent. And how many of you implemented on site SEO? Not yet. Nobody? Because I need Not to full. finish. We are learning. Yes. You're learning. Okay. I need Does yes. WordPress do it for you? No, you have to do it by yourself because the, the SEO implementation can be applied on, on any website. Well, I'll take that back. It can be applied on, on any customized website, not necessarily uh, a free built in like Weebly or Wix and Squarespace. You can do on, on them, but you don't have full capabilities. Okay, but if you have a custom built website or even WordPress based, self hosted WordPress website, then you can definitely implement some of the on site SEO. So today's topic is actually very basic. I'm not going to go through the whole detail. In fact, uh, not, not, not tomorrow, but the next Saturday, I'm going to do a seminar on SEO from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. It might be a venture by my office, possibly, or Dominion. I'll, I'll post it tonight. Okay, so that one will have more detail. That one will have. Yes. Okay, Wi Fi? Yeah, log in. Log in to the student room. Awesome. So, guys, this is the Wi Fi. Just pass it. You want to go online? Pass it. Okay. From 9 a.m. to uh, 3 p.m. I will post it sometime tonight at the, our meetup. And on that seminar, we'll go a little bit in detail. Even though it's going to be one on one, we'll talk about the on site the offside, the keyword tool, and the six month strategies that we mostly use for our customers to show you how to get traffic, how to get uh, customers, how to get targeted leads, that kind of stuff, okay? All right, so if you want to connect with me in the social media, go ahead and just look up for my name in Periscope, Instagram, Facebook. That's my personal cell phone number. So feel free to jot it down or write it down or text me or call me anytime, 24 seven. Okay, and that is my personal website. Now, before I get into <clears throat> the on-page optimization of your web pages or the website or the on-site SEO, can somebody tell me what does SEO stands for? Search engine optimization. Search engine optimization. Are you sure? I thought it, it was meant selling enormous octopus. That would be too easy. <laughs> So what does it mean? What does what does search engine optimization really mean? I know it's a technical term, but what does it mean? It means when oh, I'm sorry. It means when someone gets on your uh, website, uh -huh. they stumble upon it through a tag. It means to no. through a tag. To synchronize a specific word uh, to the word to the web. Uh huh. Yeah, to the to the yeah to the web. Okay. Okay. It may be easier to find your. It's easier for a customer to find your website, yeah, right? Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Good, good. You, you, you're close. You did good. You, you did good. Hi, thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> well, to optimize uh -huh. means to, to make it as efficient as possible. So basically, search engine optimization just makes um, your website as efficient as possible in, in, on every search engine. Okay, correct. Like in Google and Yahoo and Bing. And all those search engines, they have their own rules. They have their own algorithm. Most of them are similar, but some of them are a little bit different. So let me give you my definition. And I, I want you to understand, like 100%, what does SEO stands for? Because in the SEO process, there is something called on-site, which is the on-page. And there is something called off-site. We're not going to cover the off-site today. We're going to talk about a little bit what is the difference between this and that one. Okay, you have to understand this. Also, when you implement SEO, please try to sync this in your mind that the SEO process, it is called organic for a reason. Just like when you plant a seed, when you time to you know, grow an apple tree, it's not gonna happen, plant it today and it's gonna grow tomorrow. It's gonna take several months or year for the tree to grow. Does that make sense? Same thing with the website. If you implement SEO, it will take some time. So it's not a fast result. So if you're gonna define it, here's my definition. And I want you to truly understand what it means, okay? So SEO, is, it is a technical, Okay, it is a technical and creative process. Now, when I say technical, what does ring in your mind? 
Okay, just that. <laughs> something maybe deals with coding, maybe structure, maybe tag, something like technical, something that average people don't know what it is. Right? Technical, like the back end of the website, the, the structure of the website, how it's built, how it's designed, what, what, what kind of uh, code and, and script that we have to add on the back end of the website to enhance it, to optimize it. Correct? So it is a technical process and creative. Now, why did I mention creative? How has creative got to do with the technical? We talked about technical, the back end stuff, the technical thing, the script, and all those jazz, right? What is, what is creative has to do with the technical? Or what is the difference between the creative and the technical? But we're talking about the website. We're still talking about the website, right? So how is the creative part can reflect the website? What well, creative? The creative the part is the implement or you implement work, an idea about uh -huh. business. Uh -huh. Yeah, or the yeah, the business. Good. The, the, web, the website. Good. Like the words, the content, the target market, the color, the user experience. That's called creative. Why? Because you don't want to have a website with just a bunch of words. You got to have a website that is easy to uh, navigate, easy to use, easy to find what they're looking for. The color are not too black, not too red, but different niche. If you're selling cupcake, imagine you have everything black, <laughs> all right? How does that look like? There's a psychology behind color, right? Are the navigation, like, is it big? Is it too small? Are the font easy to read? Is it too fancy? Are the call to action easy? Like, you know, get into the list, call, subscribe, take an appointment. That's what the creative side comes in. And most of the creative side really deals with what? User experience. A lot of time, unfortunately, we don't focus on the user experience. What I mean by that, people want to just build the website, want to make it look good, but what about the user experience? Are they able to find it on the mobile device? If they find you upset on the mobile device, is it easy for your target market to navigate easily? To find the phone number, instead of typing the phone number, click on the phone number, right? The navigation on the phone has to be bigger than the, than the usual navigation on the desktop, right? The font cannot be gray color. That's so hard to read. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why the creative process comes in. That's part of the SEO, okay? Why? Because in Google's eye, in Bing's eye, in Yahoo's eye, when the customer lands on your website, they have to have an awesome experience. When they have an awesome experience, they will stay on the website. They will try to navigate, they'll spend some time, they'll read something. They will follow through the instruction. You don't want to create a website and assume people will figure it out. You don't want to do that. You don't want the people to figure it out. You need to tell them exactly what they need to do. So when you build the website, there are a few questions you need to ask, right? The first question is, who is your target market? Right? Like, who is your target market? Who are you targeting for? If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm doing a math tutoring service for high school kids, that means the images that I'm going to put, high school kids. The content and the copy is talking to the high school kids or their parents. This, this, terms, this all matters because you need to make sure that visitor stays there on the site, okay? So that's what I mean by technical and creative process. For, for what reason? So you can influence the visibility of your web pages on the organic search result. What does that mean? So when people type, let's say, uh, Joe's uh, San Antonio plumber, and suddenly he's on the front page, shows up. Or affordable San Antonio plumber, or affordable plumber in San Antonio, affordable plumber near me, and they show up. Why? Because there are more than 200 to 1,000 factors that will cause that page to show up. Does that make sense? And for that, for what? For the purpose of what? To drive targeted customers to your site. That is the objective of the SEO. You're implementing SEO because I want to get customer, I want to get targeted customer. I don't just want any customer. Because if I'm selling cupcake to high school kids only, that's my target market. I don't want somebody who wants to buy a, a Harley Davidson motorbike to come to my site. Does that make sense? Because if you don't do that, then you're gonna have some issues. You're gonna have issues where if somebody used the wrong key phrases or wrong content or wrong messages, you might get the wrong customer who comes to your site and boom, they leave right away. Okay, that is very crucial, it's very important as well. It's very essentially important. Does that make sense? 
Uh, one of my friends, uh, Ben Luther, an amazing guy who who is the owner of a company called Pressable here in San Antonio. They host a web uh, self-hosted WordPress-based website. It's a hosting company called Pressable. When the company's name used to be called Zippy Kid, he was getting tons of traffic on the front page for a keyword says, I think losing 10 pounds, something like that. The, the blog that he wrote wasn't about losing 10 pounds. It was a play on words. It was about developer having fun and some like a catchy word. It, wasn't, it was not meant for a losing pound. But he was getting a lot of hits for losing 10 pounds because people were looking for how to lose 10 pounds and his article was showing up. So he was getting all this hit, but there's no conversion because, hey, that's not your target market, man. So you have to go and change it or remove it and that got fixed. Does that make sense? So it's very important to understand this thing, okay? So are there any question about the definition of SEO? Do you understand what SEO mean right now, right? Understand 100%? Y'all can teach right now, right? Right? Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, and understand this, that the, the process of SEO, just like in social media, it takes time. The on-site SEO, it is done only once on the website after research and whatnot, but the ongoing SEO, or sometimes we call it the off-site SEO, that's a process that you, have to do, that you have to do every month. Just like in social media, you have to update every day and every week, right? Same thing with the off-site SEO. You cannot just do on-site SEO and just leave and, and expect things to happen because you have trillions of pages that are competing for the same content. And there's, Google says there's a 200 factor, but it's actually more than 200, it could be like a thousand ranking factor. And Google decides how they're going to rank you. Okay? Okay. All right, any questions so far? Yes. The best places to put those keywords, you got tags and you got a number of places. We're gonna talk about that, yeah. Oh, okay. We'll talk about that, but even then, right now, Google is actually, Especially talking about Google because they dominate seventy percent of the market. Mm -hmm. They talk right now. They're saying keyword for them doesn't matter that much because the system is learning. The system become very smart. It's looking at the pages. They, they focus more on the content. The content. more content yeah, you right. have, exactly. a thousand words, twelve hundred words, right. the better. <laughs> okay? okay, that's what they're focusing on: content, content, original content. That's what they're looking for because the system, the algorithm, the software is becoming smarter and smarter. Okay, but we'll still use these because from our tests from doing these strategies with our customer, it still works. Eventually they rank and they get the traffic, yes. And not to contradict what you're, what you're saying, I'm just trying to mm -hmm. look at uh, clarity. You're saying content, content, content. Then you said a thousand words or so. Mm -hmm. you, or where are you talking? Are you talking on your front page of your website? Cause no one's gonna read a thousand words on the front Everyone says that, nobody does, but it's the silly show they do. Really? Yes. Okay. That's what they say. You serious? Yeah, well, because your content is amazing, people are gonna read it. I do. Yeah. Have my interest. Yeah. If it catches the your, your target market's interest, it will grab their you know viewership. And plus, if you need to write a thousand words, you're not gonna have a straight thousand word. Right, you can yeah, put a bullet put points, point. video, make it look nice, couple of images, you know. And you don't have to write it every week. <laughs> you can probably write it once a month and test it. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's up to your target market, it's up to your customer. Some customers don't want to read more than three hundred words. But what they said, according to like last year and this year when many marketers did research and statistics, they found any blog post or article that exceed 1,000 to 1,200 words, for some reason they were ranking higher organically. Okay, so, so then um, we're talking basically a, a, a blog? Episode? We haven't decided yet, just hold on. We haven't, we haven't got into the, the media. Okay. We're just going to basic, very basic stuff, 1%. We'll, we'll get there, okay? We'll keep it very simple. Yeah, right. So, let's see. <laughs> okay, any question about the definition? We're good? Okay. Now, a couple of questions you need to ask. What are the top 10 keywords or terms for your business? So you have to do some sort of keyword research. You have to do a research to find out what's the top 10 that I want to be, let's say, search for or be found for. If you don't know, then you have to do some keyword research. For that, there are a couple of tools I'm gonna to share with you, I'm gonna show you which one, and we'll use that. In fact, if you have time, I might even have <coughs> to check all your website using one of my tools and see what's going on, okay? All right, the second question is, who is your target market? You have to define that. Don't tell me I'm everybody's magazine. That doesn't exist right now. So if you tell me, let's say, when I started my online market business, I was focusing on just bloggers, and eventually, you know, local business, the, you know, consultant and so forth now, you know, big companies. So you have to define 
post your target market and move on from there, okay? Because that target market it will be your language on the website because you're talking to them, does that make sense? All right, what are your top product and services? You might have maybe 10 services. Okay, what are the top three or four? Then what key phrases your customer is searching for? Not necessarily you. You did the keyword research, this is what you found, but what does your customer actually look for? I mean, this, this example can be implemented. Let me see if I have something here to show you because uh, I know Corey, Corey Ashton did this and I learned from her. I'm going to use this example real quick. I got this from Corey Ashton, who's another a business partner from Integrity. So I'm going to show you this thing in my hand. Don't say what it is. Just look at it. Okay. Everyone can see it, right? Everyone can see it. You can see it. You all can see it, right? Okay. Now I'm going to count to three. When I say three, you're all going to tell me what it is. All together. Ready? One, two, three. Last drive. So many different answers. What's going on here? It's just the one thing. You see how all of you give a different answer? Jump drive, flash drive, memory stick, toenail, right? <laughs> Information. So what does that tell you? Just because you're selling cupcake, that doesn't mean people type cupcake. They might type something like fluffy, sweet, dessert, <laughs> right? So we have to understand what your customer are searching what the, what what is the search term to look for your product and services so when you get a call you ask them how did you find me google how, what did you type such and such write it down write it down okay then last but not least write down the five top competitors you have to don't tell me you don't have a, everyone has a competitor just type them if you do a search and they're on the front page see who's your competitor because you have to eventually analyze them later on like why do they rank on the front page so you have to analyze them, you have to analyze the website, find out how many links they have, what kind of key phrases they're using, what kind of content they're writing, where they're submitting it. Do they have videos? Do they have, do they have social media? Do they have infographic? You gotta study them because eventually, you don't, you don't have to outrank them, but you wanna be within the same domain how they are. If they're on the front page, I wanna be with them on the front page. Okay? Any question about the questions? Are we good? Y'all scholars. All right, so today we're gonna talk about Here's an example of, let's say, the keyword is San Antonio real estate, okay? So we all know this, the blue, the, the first blue line, right? Right here, this is called title tax. This is where you put your key phrase or the key term. And what you need to do, you need to, you need to write it down. Every page should have a, a relevant, unique key terms. Does that make sense? Because if I'm a real estate, maybe the homepage will say San Antonio real estate. If I focus on selling homes under the services, selling homes in San Antonio, buy such and such. I'm not gonna use the same keyword, San Antonio real estate in the service page because that's not the, what, what the page is about. So the key term has to be relevant to the content within the page. You don't want to just put San Antonio real estate on the service page and your page talks about foreclosure. Does that make sense? So the key term has to be unique and relevant to the content of that particular page. Why? Because when you rank, you are not ranking your website, you're actually ranking the pages. So what happens, sometimes you'll notice, wow, my blog page is on the front page, my service page is on the second page, and my home page is on the 10th page. Why? Because it depends on how Google picked it up based on those terms and content. Does that make sense? Okay, how much you pay? Well, that, the pay thing, no, this is organic, there's no pay here. This, you pay, right? With the yellow ad, that's advertising, that is not SEO. That has nothing got to do with SEO. That's totally different beast. We'll do another class on that one, <laughs> okay? But this is organic, okay? So that is called what? Title tag, and title tag is, is considered one of the what? SEO ranking factor. That means you must put it because it helps with ranking. Does that make sense? And your title tag has to be natural. What I mean by natural, like humanly readable. You don't wanna put San Antonio real estate dash real estate San Antonio dash state real estate. San you don't wanna do that. You gotta keep it natural, like you know, Santin Real Estate Services by blah blah blah. Okay? And it, and and the title tag should not exceed more than 60 uh, 65 to 70 characters. Should not exceed more than 70 characters or 65. Because if you do, it's gonna it's gonna have a dot 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 like that, okay? Like like the last. 
Yeah. All right, then you can have your link, of course, and your link has the keyword as well here. And this is called meta tag. The description that you see below the link, it is called meta tag description. So what it is, it's just a, a brief description about that particular page. If you don't manually put the meta tag, the search engine automatically will pick anything from that page. Yes, and maybe you don't want that. And you don't want that because the, the language you know, looks gibberish. So you have to manually write the meta description. So the, the, the key terms, the key phrases on the title tag does help with the ranking, but the meta description does not help with ranking. But why should I care about it? Yeah, but you pick up the customer. Or the yeah, because when the customer finds this and the description is interesting, and you're talking to a customer, are you looking for the best real estate provider in San Antonio? Well, click on the link above for more information. You see what I'm saying? How so, do you know, how do you know Troy? I'm sorry? How do you know Troy? How I type this? Oh, it has, it has to be done on the back end. Yeah. How, how I type the meta, meta, meta. It has to be on the back end. There's a there's a like a code. You log in and you put the code. Yeah. You put the yes yeah, script. But if you have a WordPress, use your plugin. Yes. If you have a WordPress uh, software website, website, use Yoist plugin, which is the best plugin, and you can just start putting your information there. Which one is the Yoist plugin. Yoist like toast, but with, with Y. Yoist plugin. So if you have a if you have a self-hosted WordPress built website, then use Yoist, because with Yoist it's so easy to just put the content in the title tag and the meta tag, and the Yoist will do the rest. But if you're a coder, if you're a developer, then if you know how to code, then you can do that. You enter the sentence between the Yeah, you put like uh, the bracket, tag, equals, whatever, then the sentence, unblock, and un all the crazy stuff. <laughs> I, don't even, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like coding, okay? All right, so that's the meta tag, right? Now, uh, meta tag keyword, I didn't put it here because it doesn't matter. All right, any question about the title tag in the meta tag? We have to put this on every page and every page, right? Okay, all right. Let's talk about quickly different types of keyword. Because in order for you to put those key terms, we have to understand the difference between those key phrases. The first one is called short tail or general keyword. This is the one that you don't want to focus on because it's too general. And it doesn't mean you cannot rank for it, but it will probably take you years. Okay, because they have like probably trillions of pages trying to compete for it. Okay, that's called general. It's just an example, shoes, the women's shoes. Now, what you need to focus on is something like three to four words, like affordable women's shoes online. That means someone wants to buy it. That's what they, they, they search for that term, okay? Uh, navigational keyword, you don't want that either because this is only for people that are looking for brand name or just a website to browse the website. Informational keyword can be used mostly for what? Blogs, content. The, what I mean by that, if somebody's typing landscape photography tips, they're not there to buy it, they just wanna learn. Does that make sense? So you have to make a decision. Am I gonna use that keyword? If I wanna sell something, then that's not a good example for your page to rank. That could be a good example for a content, for a tip, that you can build some sort of credibility with your audience. Does that make sense? And the last one, which is my favorite, buy textbook online. That means somebody wants to buy a textbook online. So if they find your website, what are they, what are they going to do? They wanna buy it. So there's a transaction. So when you do a keyword research, you have to look at these and consider these factors, okay? Any questions so far? Nobody's confused yet? Nobody's losing their hair? Okay. All right, should we move forward? I got one. Go ahead. This is on the uh, file. On, on the, the meetup? Yes, it's on the meetup. If you need a copy, you can just go to meetup and mm -hmm. uh, pull it down from there. Mm -hmm. So once you do the keyword research, now what I'm supposed to do? You're supposed to insert them on the pages, on the title tag, on the meta tag, and on the content itself. Like your, your, your thousand words, 300 words, whatever. Uh, you can also put them on image files, okay? Uh, do not upload videos or audio files directly to your website because that will slow down your site. So if you ever want to put a video on your website, use like Vimeo or Amazon, 3S, right? Amazon uh, 3S or YouTube and just embed those videos to your site because you don't want your website to be slow, okay? Who do you like it better? I've tried YouTube and this didn't Well, I like video because I get traffic from, from YouTube, you know, as a second search engine, right? And when it comes to images, 
if you take an image of an elephant with your camera or with your phone, by default, it will give it a file name, like you know, AMD, JPEG, whatever. All right, so don't upload that file with that name. Change the file name to an elephant.jpg, okay? Because that key phrase in the file name is searchable. Yeah, it's searchable, because when you go to Google Images and you type any name, all these images shows up. Why? Because there's a file name for these images. Like when they type like this, the brain is running? You can, but you have to be careful. You don't want to manipulate. If you have a picture of your office, yeah, then you can say your business name and office of your business name. Does that make sense? Because I'm a photographer. Huh? I'm a photographer. Well, you can, you can do that. You can say a photographer. You want to run an upload. Right. So he might make an ad about my business. Right. What do you think about that? If I take a, let's say you uploaded your picture. Right? You upload your picture. Or a custom picture that would be allowed. If it's a custom picture, you will say, what is, you have to describe that picture. Because you have to make sure that the surgeon understands what, the, what, what is that picture is about. That's one. Secondly, you have to make sure people with the disability understand what that picture is. It's like blind folks. Mm. Mm. That's why you have something called alt tag. They need to know what is this image about. So you explain this image is about an elephant, or this image is about a photography done in the river center, or downtown, or the river park. That is called alt tag. Why? Because you're telling the search engine what is it about, and you're telling the folks user experience, right? Yes, blind folks actually do surf the internet, folks. In fact, I met one guy. His name is Michael Bobcock. He he actually does Periscope. He does live streaming through Periscope, and he's a web developer and a blogger. So sometimes I, um, I decided to kind of connect with him and do some business. I'll show him the client's website, so he can give me some you feedback. Blind? Yeah. And he Periscope. Periscope? Yeah, he does Periscope. Blind. Yeah. All right, so any question about internal pages, content on the pages and images? We good? All right, mm -hmm. so the tools we're gonna use, uh, SMrush, that is not free, I'm gonna use that today for you guys to give you some awesome information about your website. Uh, KeywordTool.io, KeywordTool.io, that's another tool you can check. We're gonna check it in a few, few minutes. Google AdWords is free. You have to have a Gmail account to log into Google AdWord and go to Keyword Planner and do some research, okay? And WooRank, this is not free, but the first time you run it, it can give you a free analysis about your website for the on-site SEO. It will tell you what's missing in terms of the title tag, the meta tag, and the alt tag, and all the stuff. And it gives an explanation on how to fix it. So you're gonna try that, okay? Okay, all right. So, how about Google? I'm sorry? How about Google? It's free. Google AdWords. I mean, no, the tool is free. The Google AdWords. The tool is free. If you are going to run the PPC, the pay per click of Google AdWords, then you have to pay. But the tool itself is free. So, is it a good tool? Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I wouldn't say it's great. Which it's, one do you prefer of the three? I prefer actually Market Samurai. Yeah, but. Market Samurai, you only pay once. Good. It's a software that is attached to Google Keyword Planner. So Marcus Samurai, you go to noblesamurai.com, and this is a $100 tool. It does not just a keyword, it does a lot of stuff, like content research, uh, check it out, okay? So when it comes to on-site SEO, these are typically what we used to focus. I'm not gonna cover everything today, because it's supposed to be a basic class, right? Like the URL, the link, the keyword in the link, we talked about the title tag, we talked about the meta description, the keyword usage within the content. Anchor text, what is that? It's just a hyperlink word. You go to a different article, it says San Antonio Chiropractor, you click, it goes back to your site. That's the an anchor text. It could be, it can be outside your website, it can also be inside your website, okay? Uh, images, we talk about that right now. Internal links, if you link from one blog to another, that's actually good practice for on-site SEO, okay? Uh, if you're pointing somewhere else, that's actually good because you're referring to somewhere else, but make sure Whatever you're referring to is relevant to the topic, but not too much. Don't have a, a 300 words and you're pointing to 10 links outside, okay? That's giving away too many juice. Uh, the speed of the site matters. The alt tag, it's what you describe on the back end for the images. Sitemap, a little bit technical, robot, don't worry about it, Google Publisher, and H1. But we're not gonna cover everything. What we're gonna cover today are these, okay? I'm gonna show you some example about, we talked about the title, the meta tag, and we're gonna show you how to set up the alt tag. And your website has to be mobile friendly. 
make sure your website is responsive based and is mobile friendly because last year who made an announcement that the majority majority of the search done in Google through mobile devices for any website okay then you talk about the odd band for the speed I can give you a couple two tools for the speed and if you want people to, to spend more time on your blog use embedded videos so if you have a blog post about a different topic, just go to YouTube and find any kind of video that has a similar information. Just put the video for like five minute video, 10 minute video. That means you're gonna spend more time on that page because having a reader spend more time is actually a good signal. Because you don't want them to come and leave right away. You want them to stay there for 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes. So if you, this, is, this is not a trick, it's a strategy. If you put relevant videos, that means they're reading the blog but they're also watching the videos, which is four or five minutes. That means they're staying on that page. Does that make sense? I mean, which blog are you using WordPress? Well, WordPress itself is a blogging platform, right? So when you build a website on WordPress, it has a blog page. Okay? In fact, next month we're going to do a class here, right? On how to build a website using WordPress. From 9 to 3 in the morning. Uh, blog title matters. The topic of your blog, if it's interesting, that what atta attracts the audience. Okay? I'm gonna share with you a few tools, okay? I want you to write it down. Let's see what's next. That's it, we're done. Woohoo! Go up and use the approved. Woohoo! Okay. It's only half baked. Right. So <laughs> let me show you a couple of tools real quick. For the uh, for a tool that can help you to come up with an interesting title, it's called the Tweet. Tweak your biz right here. Title generator, okay? That is the link right there. Can you see the link? Tweakyourbiz.com forward slash tools forward slash title dash generator. Okay? All right, so let me give you an example. Y'all ready? Let me know if you all wrote it down because this tool just gives an idea to come with an interesting topic. So if I type, for example, yoga. See all these? Oh my, look, there's so many. See that? List, best, how to, questions, tools, uh oh, celebrities, secrets. So many ideas. So many ideas about an interesting title that can catch people's attention. It doesn't matter. Anything. You can use it for YouTube, you can use it for podcasts. Tweak. Okay, because your. <clears throat> yeah, just do a search for tweak your biz in Google, then look for uh, title generator. So this awesome tool gives you. I mean, all these topic is even though they're generic, but they're interesting topic. Because you, you, when you write a blog or a content, you gotta make sure, or even a podcast, or even a YouTube, or even Periscope, you have to make sure the title is what interesting. People need to you know, catch that title, right? So that is one tool. Okay, and it's free. Okay? Free. All right? Free is good. Free is good, right? Nothing is free. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's one tool. Did everybody write it down? Okay, second one, used to be free but not anymore, is called uh, Buzz Sumo. Okay, the cool thing about Buzz Sumo is not free, but you can try the first one. The cool thing about Basumu, you see the filter by date. If you want to see within 24 hours in the niche of yoga, which is the most popular content, whether it's video or blog or press release. So that helps you to do two things. It helps you to share that content in your social media because it's popular, it's trending. And at the same time, it helps you to come with a topic similar to what is popular. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're saying it's not free. It's not free. Uh, the pricing. There you go. 100 bucks a month. Nice. <laughs> All right. Yes. Wow. All right. If you're an agency, you can use it. So let me give you an example. I'll talk yoga again. And I'm going to do uh, 24 hours. There you go. So right here, this topic, you don't need technology to live a long life. Yoga will do. 2,000 share on Facebook. 28 tweets. 
within 24 hours. 2,000 share in Facebook. And you can read this. You can share it in your Facebook if you're into yoga. But you can also look at the, oh, that style is interesting. Maybe I can come up with something. You don't need to, you don't need to be a jerk to live like an awesome guy. <laughs> Whatever, right? And this will do, or this, uh, this, this topic will do. So, but is that to say that that right there is in real time, pretty much what yeah. people are putting in on the, for their search? No, no, no. This is a, a popular content within Con social yeah. media. It's a popular content. It's how they find it. It doesn't tell you that. Uh, uh, okay. Don't go there. Okay. It doesn't tell me how they find it. Well, it tells me, oh, there's a trending content. Right. Okay. It's for you to understand what is trending so you can mm -hmm. use it to your advantage. I'm giving you a tip. Mm -hmm. And the tip is learn the title, right. read the content, share it. Okay. This is my something, strategy. Something in their trigger. Okay. Yeah, this, I should put use your strategy. Okay. Is there anybody else that has a tool like that? that of course, uh, man. That, People like me. That's expensive. That. No, that's less expensive than $100 a month. Another one is called Google Alerts. I use them and not. Okay, Google Alerts is free. Oh, wow. Yeah. You sign up and you put keywords. It's different, you have to put the keywords. You put, you put yoga, whatever you're interested in, right. and Google will email you. Every time there's a content or mm -hmm. somebody's searching for it, they'll send an email, okay, these are the topic for this content this week. I put WordPress. Uh -huh. And you get all the content about the WordPress, right? Every thing that is coming about WordPress yeah. is jump. Maybe I care, maybe I yeah. don't care. Do you use the Buzzsumo yourself? Yeah, of course. Oh, you, you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. For, for the, my clients? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Any question? No. We good? Mm hmm All right. Now, another tool, the Wu-Rang. So this is Wu-Rang. You put your website right here, and it will tell you how your on-site ACO is doing. If it's good, if it's bad, what well, needs to be fixed. So instead of you paying me, just go ahead and try it, and learn all the technique. <laughs> You're gonna call me. So, <laughs> we got to know. <laughs> all right, so use this. I'll give an example like, uh, let me just log in. If I don't have a password. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. That's how we do it, right? All right. What's the sumo, the website, the, 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 you guys' the website? What is it? Oh, uh, mesquitenews.com. Mesquite-news.com. The M-A-S? M-E-S. This is mesquite-news.com, and let me show you, so you guys are getting a live analysis <laughs> at no cost. <laughs> okay, so this is a WordPress-based website, by the way. I'm gonna put it here, and let's see. Let's see what's missing. I'm gonna reach out to you. <laughs> One million dollars. <laughs> All right, give it a few seconds, and it's going to do something. And I'm gonna also open another tool. SM Rush. This one you have to pay every month, 70 bucks. If you're an agency like myself, then feel free to use it. All right, so there you go. What does it say? It says, optimize your page title. So it's a top priority. That means most of your pages are not optimized for the on-site SEO. Uh, develop keyword research. That means all of the keyword are not relevant, most of it. Mm -hmm. And optimize your site content. That's like your priority task. And it's only 58. And the score is 58. So if I click more, like here, it will give me an explanation. Why it's important. See, it tells you why it's important. Page titles are important for search engine relevance as they will also be the first thing users see in the search result, blah, blah, blah. You know, they give an explanation why it's important to you. Does that make sense? So I can give the same explanation to you when you pay me. <laughs> okay? 
So it's right here for free for you, right? And how to do the title tag optimization, how to follow the Google's guideline on how to optimize the title tag. So this is an awesome tool. So when you use it for the first time, it's free. So just use it for the first time and download all the information, because if you use it again, all of a sudden, now you have to pay, right? Mm. Okay, mm. so for example, on the homepage, there's, there's no title tag on the homepage. It doesn't say, uh, uh, l l let's say, Texas State University, San Antonio Student Newspaper, right? That should be the title tag. And the title tag is missing. Right, guys? So you guys need to work on that, right? So if I click on the title tag, which is, which is the homepage, it's the homepage. So in the homepage, there, there's nothing that says what it is. Your title tag should contain between 10 to 70 characters, space included. Make sure your title is explicit and contains your most important keyword. Be sure that each page has a unique title. Uh -huh. Okay? So that's missing. In the meta description, and instead of saying, are you looking for local, new, you, new, local news by the student from the university for the South, you know, like that, click the link. It's not there. All it's there is just Texas University of San Antonio student newspaper, <laughs> right? That's not that interesting, folks. It has to be enticing. So those are missing. We need to put that, okay? That means work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, keyword mm -hmm. consistency is okay. drive, San Anto Antonio student campus parade, Zika virus, parade, cattle. Not, not cool, I don't know. But good thing, you guys have an alt tag. That's great. I guess we did this from the last minute. 71 image. Ooh. And it has all tags. Excellent job on that one. Broken links, uh, don't worry about this. It's something that happens on the back end. Uh, you are missing sitemap. You have to use Google Webmaster Tool to submit a sitemap for indexing. So you have to go to Google Webmaster Tool to do that. That's part of the SEO. Everything else looks good. There's a blog, awesome. Mobile friendly, for, yeah. For indexing what? Your website. Every website should have a site map. Just like when you go to North Star Mall, you have a map uh -huh. for the whole mall. Mm -hmm. There has to be a map that you submitted to Google. So when the Google software, the bot, the spider comes to your website, it has to go through every single page. So what happens, if you don't have the site map created from the back end or through the server, there is a chance that the bot will miss some of the pages. Or it will not index it properly. So that's why you have to go to a free tool called Google Webmaster Tool. It is called right now Google Search Console. Okay? You have to go here and add your website to Google Search Console. Because this tool will tell you if your website is properly optimized, if the crawler is crawling properly, if you have some sort of virus attack your backend and the spider cannot read it, this is what you need. It's a must for every website. Okay, like must. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so that's Google Search Console. Console. Oh, I mean Bing. Why am I doing Bing? Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, it's really cheap. <laughs> Two million dollars. <laughs> All right, so check out. Just look for Google Search Console or Google Webmaster Tool. Okay, this is another tool called Keyword uh, Keyword Tool. That IO. The cool thing about this Keyword Tool, the result that shows you. Of course, not all of it. You have to pay for it. You will show you at least some of them. The result that shows you, most of them are three to four words. Because remember, we don't want the general word. We want the two to three words, right? And the cool thing, it also helps you with YouTube. So if I type yoga, I want to do a video on yoga, but I don't know what's the most popular key phrase search in YouTube. So I click on YouTube and type yoga, and it will show me all these keywords that people search in YouTube. Does that make sense? So if you want to get into YouTube videos, make sure you use this tool. Okay, so it'll give you some idea what your target market is searching, so I can use the same key phrases. All right? Now, going back here, mobile, you gotta speed up the site because it's so slow on the mobile. Speak just Load slow. time is slow too. So what, what do you need? Two more tools. You need to have, I'm glad that you have a Google Analytics, excellent. You need, uh, 
Google speed. Probably the English and maybe Chinese. Check out this tool. It's called the Google. Uh, this one right here, uh, Insight. There you go. Uh, page speed Insight. This is very important for on site SEO, okay? So let me put the, you guys the website right here. And let's see what's the speed. The other one is called the uh, GT. Metrics. Oh, that's good. Metrics? Yeah, GT Metrics. There you go. Oh my God. <laughs> there you go. So as you can see, the speed on the desktop and on your, la on your mobile is very bad. Your speed has to be above 85%. Okay? Your speed has to be what? Above 85%. It tells you. So if somebody built a site for you, all you have to do, you tell the developer, hey, look what's going on here. So see if they can go back and fix on the back end. Mostly technical, as you can see. What was the mobile? Uh, mobile is like uh, 34. Not so it's good. worse. <laughs> yeah, it's worse. Yeah. You can also go to GT Metrics. That's another tool that checks the speed of your website. And mobile should be better than desktop desktop. Yeah. Desktop. Okay, so make sure you write down these two tools. So do a search for Google Page Speed what Insight. Did you know that, what did you know speed for your mobile? Uh, well, all has to be above 85. In fact, in mobile, it has to be faster than desktop. Like you don't want the customer to wait for two seconds, <laughs> right? It has to be like real fast. Because they're gonna be like, oh, this is too, too slow, I'm gonna move away. So there you go. This is uh, GT Metrics. It basically tells you what is wrong. Like here, you have a JavaScript issues. Oh, yes. You have image dimension issues, and it shows you exactly where they at. So you gotta do those one by one to fix. That's why you pay the developers, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, 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 please don't do that. <laughs> the images, when you bring them up, they're um, instead of being wide, they're all like squeezed together. Yeah. They look real distorted. So, so this is a tool that talks about a lot of things. See that? It gives you more information God. on how to fix it, to make it faster. Because that that, that does affect your SEO. Because, the, I mean, the thing is, it is fast to the user. Like, when you go to the website, it comes up fast. But in the back end, the process, like, so many engines are in the back, and that slows it. Okay? Is that cool or what? Or what? All right, so now, if I go to the SMrush, let's look at your organic ranking. So there, there are 1,200 keywords bringing traffic back to your site, which is great. So you are ranking almost, not necessarily ranking, but you are getting traffic out of the 1,000 keywords. We have to figure out what are those keywords, right? So when I scroll down, so you guys did how many? Uh, 200 hits, 1,000 hits, that's pretty good. For your website, that's really, really good, okay? But let's look at the keywords. Mosquito News, that's your brand name, so you're on the first page. Eight means on the first page, but the eight. This one here, when it says eight, that means on the first page of Google, but eight. Because there's like a 10 pages it's organically. Not it's not bad. But, but what happened, look, it was six. It went down. Okay. It went down, <laughs> okay? It went down, okay? Uh, the Mosquito first page. Uh, city based cinema, hmm. you're on the third page. Mosquito Texas News, first pa uh, second page. Second, second, Texas AM San Antonio, second, first, Mosquito Newspaper. That one, yeah. Terror Mansion, okay. You have numbers. Second page. San Antonio. Down, down. San Antonio. San Devil's Antonio. Bridge, San Antonio. The reason why, can somebody tell me why a thousand keyword? Hit him back to the site. Why? Because the website is a content. They were not creative. <laughs> no, they are creative. The reason they have a thousand words because they are a content-based website. They're a newspaper website. They have a bunch of content, right? How many of you guys you write content for the website? Every day or every week? Every, every week. Every week, right? Yes. Okay. So and it says here that twenty percent off of the eight hundred. Let's say that keyword, mosquito news, is, it's been searched 800 times a month. So only 20% of that gives it traffic. 
Because That's I, I mean. will look for a tree. Yeah. That's See? it. All <laughs> right. So this is an awesome tool. It helps me to understand what's going on. And I can work on these. Are these relevant key phrase? Are these part of the content? Are they on the first page? Can I push it up? Okay. That's what this school is about. So basically you're saying that the website is in pretty good shape with the group tab. Yeah, because most of the keywords like these are not like it depends on them. What do they want to rank for? Do they want to rank for the South Side newspaper? Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, the good news is their brand is kind of established, like the Mesquite News, right? The brand is established. But when I use the example of the USB, different people looking for different information. Right. Yeah, so Mesquite to, to smoke uh, uh, barbecue. Right. <laughs> there you go. Maybe you're looking for barbecue, right? Yeah. So how will look that? Then you got a barbecue, right? It's salad too. <laughs> right. I mean, the good news is you guys are getting anywhere between 700 to like 1,000, but this year, for some reason, the traffic went down. Por qué? I don't know. But you can see the traffic is good last year. Well, actually, not last year, 2014, see? Maybe during like break, right? They didn't really post that much content. After, yeah, the summer is when probably went down. Okay. How many are you putting? So your student, your, your school paper here? Yes. Yes, us too, yeah. We're, uh, what, we're two? No. No, no, this, uh, this semester we have about 20 reporters. 20 reporters. This is the first time we have about 20 reporters. Last semester we only had seven. It's slowly, you know, we're gaining more and more. Do you guys have access to the website or no? No, not to the back end. Like administrative? Yeah, you don't have access no, to the WordPress? No. I wish I could just log in and show you how to oh, well, tweak some of the, the stuff right yeah, here. Yeah, we, we just write it and they post it. They post it for you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you at Who are the developers? Are the developers? They're growing. Yeah, it's, it's growing. Yeah. Well, we're, the, new, the university is yeah. Yes, that's it. Are we looking at yeah. my desktop to see what I what I found? Mm -hmm. I will put mesquite. Let me check an example how to use the uh, the Yoist plugin for WordPress. This is Yoist plugin. Oh, okay. WordPress. Change the site. Yeah. He, he re, redesigned this yeah. site. So, for example, if I want to, let me show how I optimize one of the pages here. Let's say, um, see all this green, green, green. Uh, you have. So, I'm going to go on the back end. There you go. This is the tool. See? This is the the US plugin. So what happened now for that page, I have the keyword best weight loss doctors in San Antonio, Texas Bariatric. So I put the keyword in the, that for that particular page. And there is a keyword, I mean the, this is the link and there's a description. Okay? And the cool thing about this plugin, so you can put there you go, you see that? That's the focus keyword. Okay, you don't have to worry about the meta tag, and the rest can basically show automatically right here. I actually don't like the new design. Betty, do you like it? Hey, you go too quickly. Which See, one? you can do it all here. This is the meta tag. You can put it there. This is the link. And this is the keyword in the title tag. When it becomes green on the bottom here, it tells you, like, it gives you like information, like your personal assistant. It will tell you what's missing, what's not missing, what needs to be adjusted, what's not to be adjusted. So this SEO uh, Yoist plugin helps you to optimize the page. Even if you don't know all the SEO terminologies and the technique, you allow the tool to kind of help you out. The red ones are... Yeah, well the thing is this, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. As long as you get green, right here, you see that? It's green, right? You have, if you get the green, then you're good. Where? Where? Right oh, here. over there, move That's the trash. Right. Yeah, right there. Even if you go back on the pages, see that? Some are green, some are orange. It doesn't have to be 100 percent green because when you write the content, you're writing it first to who? To your audience. What I mean by that, you don't want to use, for example, if I want to rank for blue jeans, 
You don't want to say, I like to sell blue jeans for the blue jeans fans because the blue jeans, the best blue jeans in the blue jeans world. You don't want to write like that because that's going to be like, oh, what the heck is that, you know? You don't want to do that. You got to make it like natural. Does that make sense? So you don't have to like do everything by the book. So what you do, yes, I want to make sure that the key phrase on the title tag, the meta description is properly explained with the call, proper call to action and the image has an alt tag. So if I go back, uh, let me show you how to, in, in WordPress, to add the, I click on the image like this, click edit, and uh, where did it go, where did it go? Right here. That's the uh, alt tag. See? Picture of bariatric surgeons from Texas Medical and Surgical Weight Loss Center. I'm describing what that image, image is. That's called alt tag. And the file that was uploaded, I hope, has a name. Let's see. Does it have a name? I can't find it. Because that's how you do it. That's why I use WordPress because I can add that plugin, I can optimize it, I can add Google Analytics, I can do Webmaster too, I can do all the crazy stuff and help them with the SEO. With Weebly and Wix and all those guys, all they do is, oh, yeah, you can put the keyword in the title tag, you can put a keyword in the meta description, but you cannot do a schema tag, you can, you can, you can have a hard time to do a full customization. Now, if I change the website, the theme, mm -hmm. the SEO goes to hell, or I have to redo the whole enchilada. It doesn't matter. Theme has not, no effect. Because your pages are still the same. The content is still the same. The title tag is still the same. The meta tag is still the same. So it's a redo search. Yeah, if you have, like, a, let's say in WordPress, you can change the template. So what Betty's asking, if I change the template, the template will it affect? No, because... No, you're... because I already wrote the, the content. It's the same. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, I got it. I forgot that. All right. Uh, if you change the template, you don't change the, the content. You don't have to change the content. Well, yeah. No, you don't the have to. The content stays as it is. Thank you, because I use WordPress. Yeah. Right. The, the template and what, I yeah. Know. What happens sometimes if you change a different template, your design might break. Yeah, you have. Because they're a little bit different. To re, re. Yeah, re rewrite the, the, the format. Yeah, just reformat the template. Yes, you, you know, re realign the design. Yeah, but maybe but the, all the content in WordPress will always stay. They're not going to go away. Okay. Change the color, the font, yep. or something oh, like this, but not the main right. fight. Uh-huh. All right, so any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing. This is just the basic. The basic? Yeah. I like about this here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, don't forget to uh, join meetup.com forward slash sa online marketing, which is, by the way, a non-for-profit now, official. Oh, so you can donate, thank you so much. So when you go to meetup.com forward slash SA online marketing, uh, we have, let me show you, we have a couple of classes. Look, look, look. Oh. Yeah, it's been, I've been running this for four years, so since 2012. What, my pastor is saved here? No wonder somebody. <laughs> So is it, when, when you use stuff like that, is it best to sign up with Google or Facebook? Please it's up to you. I mean, the, 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 it doesn't matter. It's up to you. So, I'm oh, sorry. On the more. When you click like on more. Facebook, we, will use, we like to use Facebook like ads. Are the advertising good or not? Uh, for what? For what? For example, I started Facebook, yeah? Right. My personal Facebook, I started Facebook. Business, business Facebook, yeah? I started Facebook. Yeah. Right. right. The idea of advertising. You have to have a the Facebook fan page, which is a business page. Yeah. That's when you can run the ad, not for the personal. Not the personal. No, there's no feature for the personal, just only for the business. Mm -hmm. And Facebook advertising is great. It's much cheaper than Google AdWords. Google, and plus, don't think Google AdWords because Google AdWords is based on keyword search. I try to boost. Yeah, sometimes I boost. Oh no, 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 no. Facebook has more than that. They have boost. They have traffic link. They have website link. They have conversion. Nah, it's more than that. It's good. Yeah, good. And plus, Facebook is based on interest. So I can target the Texas A&M, this location. I can target the age group of students or females specifically for weight loss, <laughs> right? And and write their interest, like what they're interested in. Because they're interested in this information, when they see the ad, they're gonna click on it. Okay. See, that's different. Now, Google is more about search. So it's not the same thing. And Google's very expensive. So with this meetup, so I'm not marketing group, like I said, it's, a, it's officially non-for-profit, but you can donate, okay? 
And next week, we're gonna do a session at the tax, not at the, uh, the, the Art Institute of San Antonio. Here's the address right here. Okay, 1000 I-10. Quick the math. Okay, oh. Essential Online Marketing Tools for Your Business. That's going to be at the uh, the Art Institute of San Antonio. That's going to be. Are you going to like stream it? We're, we're going to be out of town. We're going to be in Oklahoma. I'll be in Periscope. Just join me in Periscope. That's it. Periscope? Periscope. Periscope Download yes. Periscope app and add me in Periscope. Okay? okay. So that's going to be Tuesday. Okay. Sorry. That's going to be Tuesday. Periscope. Periscope, it's an app, yeah. Then, Friday, back here at the Texas a and we'll do a class on how to promote your website through social media. I'm gonna share a couple of tips how to boost your website through why the social media should we, Why should we boost our website when it's a piece of crap that we just got through? Hey, you never know, man. You never know. You, just, you gotta take action, that's it. Every now and then I get a book sold on my website. Right. I get a little money just a piece of crap. Does, does that have a flash? Some cats running around? <laughs> We need some cats. Uh, actually, there's a cool uh, <laughs> article here. It's called "What's Done Gone to Hell." <laughs> I think it started off that way. Let's see. This is that awesome. Is there you go. Well, how how a web, a web design goes straight to hell? See that? Okay. Everything is so cool in the beginning. The client communicates their need. Yeah, you, you set expectation. The new set will be great. Great. It'll be incredible. I'll soar like an eagle. In outer space, okay, and this is the client website. Look at that! Oh my God, this set is a crime against humanity. <laughs> I know these guys. You know? It says right there. You see? I love these guys. Oat, oatmeal is awesome. The guy Oatmeal. That's his website. Oatmeal. Okay. So you scroll down. He goes ta da! Look how big difference, right? From this to this is awesome, right? Ta da! Ta da! I love it. it. Looks amazing. I want to make love to it. <laughs> then you go. To, just a few minor changes. Yeah. The site design is perfect, but I'm the CEO, so I feel obligated to make changes to feel like I've done my job properly. Also, I use phrases like user experience and conversion oriented to sound smart, even though I barely know how to use a computer. Okay. Could you make the design pop a bit more? It needs to be more edgy. It doesn't quite feel right. I honestly get customers like that. I tell them, what do you mean by pop out? I mean, how do you describe that to a designer? I don't understand that language, right? <laughs> right, minor changes started to add up. My mom, my this, my dad, my secretary, and everything, and suddenly, the end result, The sad cats. Anyway, so when you get a chance, check out this website called The Oatmeal. <laughs> this guy's comic. And do a search for uh, how of design goes straight to hell. And this guy makes money, tons of money. He sells all these. Look, he sells all these. And do you know how much traffic he gets on a Probably. monthly basis? Check it out. I want to show you how many traffic he gets. An average. An average on a monthly basis, he gets. See. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> two million hits a month. Oh wow! Yeah, no. That's just an average. He probably get three million hits. And not just that, this guy's amazing because he sells it. He sells all these comics like a poster. For like twenty three dollars, you know, twenty four dollars. All these. Amazing. It has an audience, right? Original content, right? Is like his name. This is creative. This is very creative. And he makes fun of everyone, even WordPress people and all the web developers. It's just like making fun of everyone. Ah, look at that. America, explain to non Americans. Right? Anyway. So that's that's the cool one. Whew. Going back to the meetup, then we have back here uh, how to promote your website on social media on Friday. Then WordPress Wednesday, this is for folks that have uh, self-hosted WordPress WordPress website like you guys can come to WordPress Wednesday. I haven't picked the location yet. What we do, we watch like three to two, two videos that Corey Ashton from uh, Integrity does it for an hour. And after that, if anybody has an issue with the website, we fix it on the spot. 
Okay, that's WordPress Wednesday. Then on the 25th, I'm doing a session on how to use YouTube for business. It is going to be at the UTSA downtown from 6 p.m. to 8. Okay. We meet up on the same day or the same hour. Okay. <laughs> then back on Friday on 26, how to read Google Analytics for your website. You so I'm going to open the Google Analytics. I'm going to show you how to read it. You uh, yeah, uh, I need yeah I need to add the seminar on which is Saturday. Is that this Saturday? The next Saturday, I need to put the SEO 101, okay. which is going to be from 9 a.m. till 3. Did you say Saturday? You just repeat the date though, right? Huh? Yeah, repeat the date. It's so, going to be Saturday, not this. The next Saturday. What day is? What 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 day is that? Oh, uh, talking about the, the WordPress. Uh, oh, for WordPress, no, I'm still waiting on Jamie. Oh, okay. Yeah, because for the WordPress uh, 101 will be next month, right here. From 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. I'm going to show people how to build a basic site using WordPress. Okay. okay. That's going to be covered, like how to pick the hosting, the web hosting, install. Then we're going to go through the back end, like what does each section mean. We're going to go through that's everything. That's next month. That's next month. Okay. And it will be like on Saturday too. It'll be like okay. some one of the Saturdays. And, and is there a cost to me? What? Oh yeah, just uh. One million. No, it's kidding. Don't <laughs> no cost. No cost. It's part of the part of the. I'm serious. It's no cost. Yeah, we don't serious. we don't we don't charge. Only that you have. Only to the business owner pays us. You have to bring your own sandwich. Yes. Oh, okay. I can I can cook. Not you can have some food, right? You can have some food, maybe. Uh, yeah, Jamie can cook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good cook, man. She's not here. Yeah. I didn't bring any food. I just brought. <laughs> All right. Where are the girls today? Uh, they're out of town. All right. So, any more questions? <laughs> That's laughing. <laughs> So let's come to the seminar because in the seminar we're going to go through some details, okay? You need the whole day, okay? And if you need the copy of this presentation, when you become a member of the San Antonio Home Marketing Group, just go to More Files, and it's right here. Okay. Where is the join button? Where is the join? You know this this media. Uh, 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 this place where it says join when you open. Uh -huh. And enter your name and don't. Uh -huh. If you join a ER, you're a member. Yeah. yeah. You get a notification every time there's a class, you get an email, or there's a class. Yeah, I think I did it. And you're a member? Yeah, a member. Okay. Okay. All right, folks. Let's see, I have an office we can use now for meeting at La Cantera. That's awesome, Blake. I'll see you later, okay? Thank you for waiting. All right.